Hello friends here is a new story. I hope you all like the video and subscribe to my channel. Now here is summary. When they were mortal they were in love. Now they are gods that are twins with a child. What will Artemis and Apollo do when the lines are not so simple anymore? Naruto will still be a Jinchuriki but will be raised by the twin archers in the PJO world not Kahona. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Chapter 1 Awakening Kashina Uzumaki had said her final words to her little baby Naruto before succumbing to her wounds and the removal of her tailed beast while Minato Namikaze had died shortly before from his use of the Reaper Death Seal Jutsu. Their child Naruto Uzumaki was now an orphan and the newest Jinchuriki of the QB. Naruto I am sorry it was not me who died so you can have both your parents but I promise you I will do everything in my power to keep you safe from here on now. Hiruzen Sarutobi the Sandame Rakic said with a sigh as he picked up the blonde baby in his blanket. He quickly sent a signal to his Anbu who went back to the Hakage Tower for further orders. Hiruzen went to the bodies of his successor and his wife intending to seal them up in a scroll to bury them afterwards but he saw a faint glow making him stop and hold on to Naruto protectively. There was a faint silver glow around Kashina's body and a golden glow around Minato's body. It can't be. Hiruzen said in disbelief. They told me their godly selves would return back to that place after death. He murmured as he watched the glow continue to shine. He got on his knees while holding Naruto and said reverently my lady, my lord it is an honor and privilege. Hey little Sarutobi. Called out the golden light. Rise Hiruzen. The silver light said at the same time. When they heard each other voices the lights turned to each other and guessed it can't be you. At the same time, the lights pulled away from the dead bodies and formed into godly beings. The silver light turned into Artemis, Greek goddess of the hunt, archery, wilderness, forests, the moon, chastity, and childbirth. She was the daughter of the king of the god Zeus and the titan Leto. She was currently in the form of beautiful red-haired woman in her early twenties with sharp piercing silver eyes. She was in full huntress gear but was unarmed looking out disbelief at the godly being across from her. The golden light had turned into the Greek god of the sun, light, healing, disease, plagues, music, art, poetry, artery, reason, knowledge, truth and prophecy. He was the younger twin of Artemis, despite his joking claims otherwise, being a son of Zeus and Leto. He was currently in the form of a handsome man in his early twenties with tan skin, blue eyes and blonde hair, looking similar to his mortal avatar Minato. He was a more casual outfit with shorts and Hawaiian shirt. Please fates tell me I did not sleep with my little sister when I was mortal. Apollo pleaded dramatically ignoring Artemis glare at him. Shut up! If anyone is supposed to be disgusted it's me! It might not be my true first time but my mortal self lost her virginity to you. Artemis screamed while she kept shaking her head in denial. A uh, my lord and lady? Hyrazin said quietly still on his knees. Yes, what is it? Artemis asked looking away from Apollo to the Sandame wreckage temporarily stopping their shouting match. You are scaring Naruto my lady. Hyrazin said pointing at the now awake Naruto who was squirming around and whimpering. Artemis immediately went quiet when she saw her baby boy. Two words she never thought would go together. She never believed she would get pregnant let alone have a child and even if she had a child, she expected it would be girl. For the first time in her immortal life she had no idea how to feel. Her original impulse was to dislike the child simply for being a boy but a much deeper longing in her heart quenched these thoughts. She remembered as Kashina Naruto growing in her stomach for 10 months and how elated she felt when she discovered she was pregnant. However, Apollo had no such reservations and instantly ran up to his child with a massive grin, Naruto. My little sunshine did you miss your daddy? Apollo said with a coo as he went up to Naruto and started making silly faces at the small blonde baby. Hearing the warm voice and funny expressions Naruto calmed himself down and started gurgling happily making his dad even happier even minute. Despite what demigods and even gods believed Apollo loved his children immensely. He went out of his way to claim every one of his demigod children as soon as they reached Camp Half-Blood and was willing to hear the prayers of his children most of the time. He did not have any particular favorites but he secretly thought hearing this child right now Naruto may have taken his immortal heart forever. Seeing Naruto happy squealing snapped Artemis from her thoughts and she knew what she had to do. 
She started walking towards Hyrison and Apollo with a neutral expression making Hyrison nervous while Apollo put an arm in front of them protectively. Artemis stopped her foot away from them with a raised eyebrow. Artemis. Apollo said sternly making Artemis surprised as she was sued to her brother calling her already just to annoy her but his expression and voice made her a bit on edge. I love you but no matter what I will protect this child. So not even you will be safe from my wrath if you hurt this child no matter what you feel towards my gender. Apollo warned her with his eyes cold. Artemis' eyes widened before she looked down with a small smile. She knew he must have truly loved Naruto for Apollo to threaten her of all people. She looked Apollo in the eyes and said simply I swear I will never harm this child. Can I please just hold my child in my arms? Artemis' eyes had grown soft and she pleaded which in itself was a shock. In over 4,000 years Artemis had never pleaded as far as Apollo had known or shown this kind of expression. He looked her directly in the eyes for any signs of deceit. After a tense minute he nodded to Hyrison who lifted Naruto towards Artemis. She gently picked him up with a warm motherly smile as Naruto looked around confused. He felt himself leave the warmth of one person's arms but then felt even safer and warmer in this new setting. He looked up to the beautiful silver eyes which looked soft as clouds as she peered down at him with love. Naruto. Artemis said in pure love and hope as Naruto looked up and cooed raising his tiny arms. Artemis kept him at her chest level and put one of her fingers near his chubby hands. Much to surprise and joy Naruto grabbed her finger with his tiny hands and pulled them towards his mouth chewing on them with his non-existent teeth. This cemented his place in her heart forever as Apollo looked on with a warm smile and Hyrazin with a shocked but pleased smile. Based on what he was told Artemis generally disliked males and he feared what would happen if she held her own male child. Apollo walked up to Artemis and Naruto and put one hand gently on Naruto's whiskered cheeks making him rub his cheek against the warmth. Artemis noted his whiskers somehow made him even more cute and lovable in her eyes as she looked at Apollo who like her looked confused. They no longer felt the same kind of love or intensity of that love when they were simply two mortals in love but they knew that their relationship could never be the same again especially with this child in their arms. Chapter 2 Plans? So, Lady Artemis what will happen to Naruto now that you are Lord Apollo are back in your godly forms? Hyrison decided to ask the happy gods. He is coming home with us back to our world. Artemis said with a look like it was obvious. Apollo however frowned and said Artemis you know father will not like you having a child whether or not he is truly your godly child. Artemis hissed and glared at Apollo for speaking the truth. I don't care what father thinks, Naruto is our child and he is staying with us no questions asked. Artemis replied furiously holding Naruto closer who looked innocent and cute. Besides I am his daughter and I have always known how to calm him down when he is in one of his moods. Artemis said dismissively. Apollo chuckled knowing full well that Zeus was strict on his children but a sucker for his two immortal daughters Artemis and Athena. Even if you get father to agree to let us raise Naruto how about your hunters? Apollo asked seriously. What about them? Artemis asked honestly curious. She believed they would treat Naruto as a little brother with no problems. Artie you might not want to admit or see it but your hunters adore your far beyond sisterhood. If they see you giving your attention to Naruto a child they can never be they may get jealous. Apollo reminded an annoyed Artemis. Even if they have some problem with Naruto being my child they will listen when I tell them he is not be harmed and to be treated with respect. Artemis said protectively. Alright but if something happens to Naruto and your hunters are responsible just remember this. Their immortality does not protect them from sudden combustion. Apollo warned Artemis gravely. Artemis growled but nodded stiffly. I know we are his parents and we shall protect him from anyone including my hunters if needed. Artemis said stressing the last part making Apollo nod. My lady is there anything you need to do here before you leave? Hyrison asked knowing it may be the last time he ever saw the two gods. A part of him wanted to argue and have Naruto stay in the village but he knew Naruto would be safest and happiest with his parents rather than an orphan. Actually, there is something I need to do before we leave. Apollo said making Artemis and Hyrazin look at him in surprise. Hey Shinigami I need a favor. Apollo shouted much to their surprise. The death god manifested in front of them as a spirit-like figure. What is it Olympian? The death god growled. While few humans knew about the Olympian worlds the gods of both worlds knew full well the existence of each other. 
the death god summoned by the Jutsu was little more powerful than a minor god in the Olympian world. So, he knew it would not be wise to piss off two major gods so he was somewhat respectful. Aiden too, I want you to summon the souls of our mortal selves for a small chat before we leave. Apollo announced making Artemis growl. What are you doing? This is against the very law of nature in both worlds. Artemis hissed as Apollo looked her straight in the eye. It is the least we can do to give Naruto one final talk with his mortal parents. When he crosses over to our world his soul will never reach over here so they won't even see him when he is dead. Apollo explained as Artemis narrowed her eyes in anger. I am his mother. Not that mortal shell anymore. Artemis said in jealousy of her mortal self. Yes, you are his mother but so is she. Please Artie just give this woman who allowed you to have a child a few minutes with her child while you will have the rest of his life as a mother. Apollo pleaded as Artemis looked down at Naruto who had drifted off to sleep in the commotion. After a tense minute she stiffly nodded her head staring at the death god. Just this one time but you have to leave afterwards Olympians. The death god warned as two souls appeared in his hands before they solidified into somewhat solid shapes. Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikis were back to life somewhat as they blinked their eyes. Lady Artemis and Lord Apollo, we heard everything while you were talking. Minato said respectively gazing at his son briefly. Look I will be honest and say I would want Naruto to grow up here instead of your world. Kashina admitted brashly as Artemis' grip on Naruto tightened and her eyes narrowed. But our time is up and Naruto deserves love so please show him the love we can no longer. Kashina pleaded with tears running down her face. Her expression looking at her sleeping son was one of longing and knowing her entire lie was not enough time loving this child. As Artemis and Apollo stayed quiet to let a dead mother look at her son one final time Minato decided to speak. Please teach Naruto good values and morals. Do not let him become arrogant and try to have him make friends. Make sure he knows hatred and revenge is never the answer and that love can come from a lot of places. Naruto, I love you. Minato said sadly giving all of the fatherly advice he could for the first and last time. I promise that he will grow up to be the best man in existence and he shall know what love means. Artemis promised the parents who stared at her son. Minato there is something I need from you. I would like you to transfer your half of the QB into Naruto. Apollo requested much to the shock on the group. What the hell are you taking about that Bane? Kashina cursed as Artemis looked equally outraged. Naruto is already a Jinchuriki which we can't remove without endangering his life and now you want to take on an even bigger burden? Artemis asked outraged. Lord Apollo it seems illogically. The QB chakra inside me cannot be used by anyone else so there is no reason why I need to seal it somewhere else especially into Naruto. Minato added. And 3. Naruto will have to face challenges in the future and it is best if he has as much protection as possible. Apollo explained calmly raising a hand when they about to argue. When both halves are joined inside Naruto he will be able to use its full power in the future in Artemis and I can be there in case something happens. Apollo elaborated staring at Naruto while Kashina and Artemis glared at him. Minato looked at the death god who shrugged before closing his eyes in thought. After a minute he opened them full of determination. Alright if you think it's best, I will do it. Minato said seriously ignoring his wife and her godly counterpart furious glare. No, no, no. I will let out son become an even bigger target. Just leave the QB chakra in the afterlife like you are supposed to and leave Naruto out of it. Deadbane. Kashina yelled angrily with Artemis nodding her head in agreement. She was willing to agree Kashina was Naruto's parent as well in this rare situation. Kashina, my lady. Minato said politely making Hyra's and smirk lightly at how the mortal selves treated their godly selves with so much respect. If Naruto is the child of prophecy in this world then the fates will make him a target in your world no matter what. At least with the QB fully intact Naruto will have the power later on to face any challenges he gets to. Minato pleaded with Kashina who still looked definite. Besides he is our son and I want to believe he can do what we fail to and control the QB to protect his loved ones. Mia to declared making Kashina sign nod. Artemis other me is right. Besides nobody me and you in our world knows how seals work so nobody can ever unseal the tailed beast chakra inside Naruto so he might as well have the most of a bad situation right? Apollo, in 4, told his reluctant sister. Alright but we will have to be there for Naruto every step of the way so he doesn't lose control deal?
Artemis growled as Apollo merely smiled already knowing they would never let Naruto be alone. As Minato was about to start the seals Harizen decided to speak up. Please wait. What will I tell the other nations when the QB suddenly disappears from Outworld? He asked loudly knowing without a Jinchuiki the leaf would be vulnerable. Apollo smirked and said tell them that other me and Kushina use the Reaper Death Seal to seal half of the chakra into each of bodies and with the seal being a death seal the QB is unable to reform. Apollo gave him a grin and thumbs up making everyone shit drop. And for the Anbu who saw other me make Naruto a Jinchuriki I already modified their memories being you know me and awesome. Apollo added smugly making his sister roll her eyes, Kashina giggle and Minato laugh. And the fact we are vulnerable without a tailed beast to fight off other ones? Hyrazin asked dryly. Hey you, Tsunade and the pervert being seal masters will more than enough to fight off tailed beasts. Nobody will question anything as the three of you have sworn of the river sticks. A in five, so information about us and our world cannot be leaked. Artemis added impatiently. All right, goodbye Lady Artemis, Lord Apollo, and Naruto. May you rest in peace Kashina and Minato. Hyrazin said warmly before he used the Shunsen Jutsu to run back to the Hukage Tower. He already sealed Kashina and Minato body in scrolls before running off. Now then, Tailed Beast Transference Jutsu. Minato yelled after flashing through several hand signs. Red Tailed Beast Chakra left Minato's spirit body as it flowed into Naruto's small frame. Naruto did not even stir as his body sealed the other half of Kurama into a seal without any complications. Please show our love to him and raise him well. Kashina pleaded with tear running down her face as her form flickered. Artemis and Apollo nodded and Minato and Kashina hugged each other as they went back to the afterlife. The Shinigami gave the Olympians one quick nod before he vanished as well. Now then Naruto time for us to go home and meet your family. Artemis said sweetly to her child as a silver light enveloped the three. After a minute they vanished as if they were never there. I hope you all liked the video. And if you all want the next part of this video please like the video and comment 3 hearts. Please subscribe to my channel so whenever I upload a video you will notify.